Is it the murder thing? Yeah, I thought it might be. Now it's after dinner and we're out at the club. I'm grinding up against you and I'm starting to chug. <laughs> oh, you know, girl, we're making it work. While Brian goes completely fucking apeshit berserk. There were 300 people at this club. Brian killed 297, so that leaves us with the party. down a tasty bridge. Damn girl, we had such a great night, it's a shame all bystanders couldn't have survived. We're going back to my place where we're gonna make love at the moment of completion. Our rhythms are like a dust. Let me lay the foundation of the state of our relation. There's gonna be temptation and cessation of vibration, followed by the creation of your sexual frustration, ending in the culmination of elation, consummation. There's just one thing I think I forgot to mention, Ninja Brian's gonna be there giving us a full attention. Cause nothing could be hotter than a sensual embrace with a ninja staring at us three inches from your face. Woo! It's a party three. Ninja Brian. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 24 of the Dark Live Podcast. It is I, the host for this week's episode, Dark Fox 47, and with me as always. Live to win. Are you ready to go for four hours today? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I got a lot to talk about. That's all I'm saying. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, I guess we'll go into... Oh, wait. Shit. Where is it? What do we normally start off with? Oh, do it twenty-four episodes. I can't remember. Um, Usually, games and updates. That's, that's right, sort games of and thing. updates first. So, uh, I've got a couple things to say on that front. Uh, um, Halo Three released between podcasts, didn't it? Yes, it did. Halo Three uh, for Master Chief Collection released between podcasts. That's super fun. Uh, st still working on doing Halo 2 under three hours with my friends. We're down to, we need to cut uh, cut it down another seven minutes and 47 seconds. Uh, it's gonna be fucking suck, because the only missions we can cut time down on, realistically, are the hardest ones. Right. 
and also the longest ones. So that's going to be fucking fun. But hey, everything after two is going to be a cakewalk, because, you know, one of us can die, and it won't set us back a checkpoint. But other than that, Halo Infinite, uh, get a small cinematic slash gameplay trailer was on uh, Thursday. Thursday, that release. It looks alright. I mean, the graphics... People, people keep saying, like, oh, the graphics, they're not... Like, yeah, no, they're, they're, like, not, like, the best graphics, but at the same time, I'm not really picky about that. I'm more kind of uh, mechanic-wise, because they're making it, I don't know if it's full open world or semi-open world they're making it, um, which, uh, it'll be... I mean, I'll wait to see how it's implemented before I comment whether or not I... I'd actually need to... Oh, surprise! I, I need to actually play it first before I say if it's not good or not. What a novel concept that a lot of people don't understand nowadays. All the people are like, Oh, I saw one trailer for the game. It's a piece of shit. I'm not playing it. It's like, you, you, you gleamed all that from, a, from an eight-minute trailer of, like, a ten-hour game. <laughs> like, well, you gotta judge a book by its cover. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> if we did... If if you if you could accurately judge a book by its cover, then The Last Jedi would have been a good movie. But, um... Yeah, so Halo Infinite, it looks interesting. Um... I'm not really sure. I'm... Not sure how it's going to tie in with the story that was left at the end of five, which I only vaguely remember because five's the only game I haven't played the campaign because I was gonna play um, co-op it with Jinko, but we just never had the time, and then the CD got lost. But I played a shit ton of the multiplayer, which was fun, but uh, I never did the campaign, and I vaguely remember what happened in it from watching Achievement Hunter go through it. Um, so I'm not interested to see how, because not a lot of people like that, and it looks like they might be trying to be like, oh, well, uh, we're kind of like, oh yeah, it happened, but we're kind of going away from that, making it less of a huge thing than it was supposed to be, because people didn't like that. Um... Yeah, I mean, mechanic-wise, looks like some fun new mechanics, like grappling hooks, uh, equipment's coming back. Well, I guess, did it ever really... I guess... It... No, I guess equipment was in 5, but that's more, I don't know, more like abilities than equipment. I guess it was still called equipment. Oh, there's like, just... There's like, equipment as in like... Halo 3, where it's like one-use equipment, and then there's equipment like in Halo Reach afterwards, where it takes time to recharge, and it's reusable. So I think I think it's the recharge reusable kind. But uh, it looks interesting. The only thing I don't... I wasn't too keen on was a lot of the new gun designs... Like, Halo, all the guns had their own aesthetic. They All the human weapons were, you know, unique. They had their own look to them. And, th like, three... All of the new guns they introduced in the that trailer for the game, you can't tell the difference between them and, like generic guns used in Call of Duty Killing Floor 2 like it just it nothing about it was like it didn't look UNSC it didn't look unique it didn't look like unique to Halo it just looked like generic gun with some texture things to make it look more like Halo which is just I 
it, it's just really disappointing because just like we've, we've, they've given us well 343 I mean Bungie gave us all the original Halo guns and 343 I don't remember what well all the guns that I remember that 343 has introduced all the human ones and 4 and 5 were fine they look like they fit in the universe they didn't look generic but these ones in infinite they just look like generic um, SMG generic 19 like the pistol the guy starts with it just looks like a, a souped up 1911 it doesn't look like the Halo Magnum at all it just looks like a 1911 but it, the years 25 60 something actually it'd probably be 25 70 something I don't know how much time goes between 3 and 4 and then uh, time goes between 5 and 6 but that doesn't matter timelines are all over the place and things like that but yeah that's the yeah that that's really my own only real complaint all there's also the small little complaint about how 343, like, they're, the gun noises are just really poppy and just, there's no kick to them. They just sound really lackluster for what they're doing. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed. It's good, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> It's it's really the open world aspect of it that I can. I mean, I won't say it's a bad game because well, the guns weren't that. That's not. I wouldn't levy that against the game. I'd levy that against the company, the creative team for not coming up with anything original that lo looks like you know an evolution of the already existing human weapons, you got a huge roster of them. Do, do, evolve them. Don't just be like, oh, this 20th century weapon. Actually, be 21st century weapon. But, you know. Um, I think I've said enough on Halo. And then a lot more information on, because EA has like, EA Game Changers, which is like they have a bunch of influencers, I guess that's the term, like YouTubers and that, who come in and they play games, like, first, to sort of be like a, hey, we got this game, go in and play it, and um, so we've gotten actual footage of Star Wars Squadrons, um, what the gameplay is going to be like, and small little preview, well, not a preview, they couldn't actually show the video, but like a short little synopsis of the first two prologue missions of the campaign and it sounds and from the gameplay look and everything it looks very very promising like and the campaign you start off like the first mission in the campaign is starting off as Imperials and your mission is to hunt down and kill survivors from Alderaan and I'm like, okay, they just, if if that's what they're starting off the game with, where you're killing refugees of a planet the Empire blew up to make a point, yeah, it sounds like they're like, okay, you're going full Empire during the Empire uh, segments, which I'm like, oh, great, <laughs> It's like they're not going to sugarcoat. It's like, oh, they're not actually that bad. They're just, you know. And then uh, it's going to be like switching between, like you do mission as the Empire, then you switch over to the new to the new Republic, and kind of like a back and forth. I'll be curious to see how the campaign ends, and also how long it is. But it sounds like just from the little bits that. I've heard about it. it. Sounds like the campaign's actually got substance to it, which is great to hear. And the gameplay looks incredible. 
it, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun and that there's going to be a lot of um there's there's definitely a hu going to be a huge learning curve to it i think also this is like one of the first star wars games at least that i'm aware of where like there'll be capital ships like on the map and they'll shoot at you but for the most part they won't shoot you down in this um <laughs> it's funny because they didn't go far enough into the campaign where they teach you how to actually f take on capital ships so uh during the live game session if you look at the top right of the screen you just see like constant lines of this ship has killed this player because uh, if you don't go like full speed buzz a capital ship if you go s slow past it or at an like take it head on it will tear you apart in like seconds which is realistic when you know a ship with guns that put holes in capital ships hits your fighter you're going to be evaporated so that's that's a cool mechanic also um apparently it's just a fun little tidbit um that you can you can fly your a-wing into the bridge of the star destroyers and it does cause some damage. Which, Liv, you won't get that, but at the end of Episode 6, there's like a Super Star Destroyer big ship. It gets its shields taken down and an A-Wing kamikazes into the into the bridge of it. And then it it falls to the... It, it, it gets destroyed. Which is like... I was like, oh, you know... I, I didn't even think about that being a possibility, but I'm glad they at least made that, like, hey, you know, y you're not going to instantly kill the ship, but hey, it does some damage. Because <laughs> that would just be <laughs> kind of funny. Just like, oh yeah, just, you're, you're playing as the Empire defending the Star Destroyer, and you just see, like, the shields are down, and then the other team just switches all the A-Wings, and it's like, fuck, <laughs> as they're going full speed for the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an interesting game mode. <laughs> Where it'd be like, um... I don't know what kind of... It'd be like, um, one of those, like, bomb game modes where someone's got the bomb and they try and get it into your capture point. Except with ships. But yeah, I'm... So far, it's looking like Star Wars Squadrons is going to be good. Uh, which I'm happy for, and I'm going to play the shit out of it when it comes out. Um, uh, that's all I can think of. I didn't pay attention to literally anything else that happened at the Xbox conference. I actually forgot that was a thing. What was? Oh, the Xbox conference. Xbox conference. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, I just... Halo Infinite, and I didn't really care about anything else. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's all I've got. Yeah, the only thing I heard is apparently for the first time ever, Yakuza is going to be 60 bucks. It's always been 30 or 20, so looks like I'm not going to be able to play that on release. So that's going to suck, but other than that, uh, eventually I'm going to play it, but it just won't be on release. I'll wait until sale and get it then. Still looking forward to it, though. When is that release? Uh, apparently, I think it's still unknown. So, it's supposed to be this year, and I do know the consoles are set for, like, November-ish? So, there is a theory that maybe Yakuza Like a Dragon might come around that same time. Last I checked, yeah, it's on Steam, it's still unknown, so. They say this year, and they never say an actual day, so. I mean, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Did I mention Far Cry 6 the last time? I'm trying to remember when that trailer came out for Far Cry 6. 
I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh yeah, Far Cry Six. Then the baddie in this one is the guy who plays the doctor in uh, or the dentist in Payday Two, which he's known for oh. much more famous things like Breaking Bad, or uh, as Moff Gideon in uh, The Mandalorian. He's a really great villain, and I'm just just by his personality, he just plays a really great, cold, calculating villain. It's just mm-hmm. his personality, and it fits him so well. So I'm not going to be surprised when he ends up being my favorite Far Cry villain. <laughs> provided, you know, that they, well, that provided that, you know, the people who write his script actually do a good job, and the actual story's good. But it's like one of those things where it's like, you know the actor's going to give their best, it's just if they'll be given the proper support yeah. to come across as they should be. God. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, you know, no, uh, after Star Wars Squadrons, I'm not getting, I've spent way too much in video games this year. I bought Red Dead 2, I bought, I bought, uh, Borderlands 3, uh, I pre-ordered, uh, Star Wars Squadrons. I'm like, okay. That's it. Halo Infinite releases sometime this year. And then, uh... Uh, Far, the new Far Cry releases sometime early next year. I think it said it's coming... Oh, not not Far Cry, but going back to Halo Infinite. I think it said it's coming sometime during the holiday season, so sometime in December. Infinite will be releasing. If I'm remembering correctly... That's all I can think of. Now that's all I can think of. It's really the only three games. I was like, oh, nice. Now, uh, you have anything to add on that? Uh, no, other than the Yakuza thing that I already mm-hmm. mentioned. Yeah, it's gonna suck, but still looking forward to it. It's probably gonna be good, but which yak- uh, which, sixty dollars? Which number yakuza is that? Because there's like a million yakuza, isn't there? Uh, this would have been seven if they still went by numbered, but they're kind of doing a spinoff, so it's yakuza, but it's yeah. Kind of its own story. As I understand it, it's supposed to be its own story. So they're kind of like essentially rebooting the series. And they are. I'm hoping there's no callbacks, but if that happens, I can't really get excited if I haven't met the character yet. So. Yeah, that's. That's fair. But yeah, it's still looking forward to it. Hope it's good, but see what happens. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. It's like, man, it looks promising, and they've done good things before, but so of other video game companies who have completely shit the bed on iconic mm-hmm. franchises. It's like, how did you get this wrong? You've done this how many times before? Of course, you know, it's not always the same people, and then, you know, People want different things for video games and that. Then it just gets all... Like, trying to cater to to what people want, and then you just end up getting something that's just... Meh. So weird when you say that there's changes, because I'm thinking it's someone in Sega. Someone at Sega said, let's take P5, let's turn it into a hack and slash... And then, you know that beat-em-up game? Let's turn that into a turn-based. So essentially, you took P5, had them basically become Yakuza, and take Yakuza and turn that into P5. So, great. (laughs) Thanks, Sega. I mean, I have, like, nothing against when, like, when Wolfenstein, uh... What was the name of the one that was the co-op one with B B J Blazkowicz's daughters? And you, it was co-op, and it was a uh, uh, 
you, you know, like Destiny, kind of, that open world, explore, do stuff, grab things, level up, fight enemies. Uh, I forget. When you, I don't know what you call it. Um, I guess they want more RPG with it. There we go. Like RPG elements with it. And that, I never played it, and it just wasn't well received because it just fell short. I remember, I remember Jojo before he played it. He's like, or when he started playing it, he's like, "Oh man, you know people are just whiny babies," and you know, da da da. And then he, it was like a stream or two later, and he's like, "Man, this game's not great." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally, totally 180, huh? You, you know, maybe people have a point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, yeah, but it's that wasn't like a main game. That was like a a side one. So like when they do like side games that like, oh, let's try something mm-hmm. a little different. I'm okay with that when they try and do things like that. Like with XCOM Chimera Squad, it was they took a departure, kind of changed up. This it's the same XCOM formula, but they changed it up a bit and it was a nice little side game and I hope there's some elements that make it to whenever we get three because you know the, everything's getting pushed back mm-hmm. and it's just like will anything release and apparently everything's releasing except movies movies aren't releasing but video games at least people have the ability to you know, do that from a safe, secluded area. Or I don't know, maybe restrictions are being lifted. I don't know, restrictions have kind of been lifted a bit in Canada because things are on the okay right now. But, you know, don't expect everything to go back to normal immediately, because that would be insane and unsafe. But, yes. Um, So, I guess we move on to uh, Helltaker. Yeah, let's move on to that next. Alright. Um, Helltaker, for anyone who's not aware, is a puzzle-y, I don't know, I, I wouldn't really say vis- visual novel, though that's 90% of the Hey, Josh, thank you for the host. Do I feel like a hero yet? I don't know what you mean by that. Um. Spackot's reference, I love it. Well, he didn't have it in quotation marks. Like every time, I know it's a Spec Ops reference when he puts it in quotation marks, but he didn't put that one in quotation marks. How dare! How dare you! How dare you not play Spec Ops? You should know that. Oh, you're right. You are completely right. So yeah, Helltaker, uh, puzzle game, dating kind of game. 99% of it's just, just the dating part. Yes, that's better. <laughs> uh, I really love the game. I thought it was an enjoyable little game. Uh, I absolutely adore the soundtrack. It's up there in my top three video game soundtracks. Like It's up there with, like, well, not video game, indie game. Because I can easily think of that. It's up there with... If I had to say what my top three were in no particular order, it would be Helltaker, Doki Doki Literature Club, and then uh, Stardew Valley. And I think Metaware High School would come in a solid fourth after those. Uh, but yeah, Helt. Yeah, it was just it's just a fun little dumb game. The game only has like five songs. Well, it's got four songs, and the fifth one's like a VIP, like remix of the first one. So, it's really only four songs. They're, it's, it's a great loop. Um, so, Liv, how about you talk about uh, your stuff? I know I, I, I watched you play 
actually about all of it. <laughs> During that one part where you were stuck on the final puzzle, I had your stream open, and then I just had the stream open back from the beginning, and I just had it playing on two times speed. <laughs> I, I'll do that that's a lot. Fun. You ever do that? Like, you just... There's, like, a video that's, like, you want to watch it, but you don't want to spend the whole time watching it, so you just put it on two times speed. And you, you get everything uh, out of it, but half the time. No, I don't think I've ever did that, actually. If I really wanted to watch something, I watch it beginning to end. So... That's the way That's fair I enough. did it. I, I, I watch most videos, beginning to end. But some videos, like, especially guides, when I'm watching, like, guides for achievements or something, mm -hmm. I'll just, unless it's, like, really finicky stuff going on, I just have it on two times speed, because I don't want to wait there ten minutes for the guide to be over to then go do it. A nice game which got created because a guy wanted to see more fan art of hot demon girls, let's be honest. Yeah, let's just be honest, that's the whole point of it. <laughs> so, Liv. Mm-hmm. Your impressions uh, on the game. It's a puzzle game. Uh, not really my kind of type of game, but then again, I also didn't finish it, so I don't know if that matters or not, but... Uh, I kind of felt like I kind of had to do more in order to, like, get enjoyment out of it. So, basically, I just, that final boss, uh, it, made, it made it more interesting for the stream, but at the same time, I know for a fact, if I did that for a few more hours, I think my carpal tunnel will just start kicking in easily having to do, like, fast precision and all that stuff, like, uh, that would just be hell on my wrist. Uh, luckily, I think because I was doing on a keyboard, it probably was a little bit easier on my carpal tunnel, so, uh, maybe that was a plus, so, but yeah, I don't really have much to say about it, good or bad, it was, it was all right for what it was, but not really my kind of type of thing. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I. How long was that stream? Five hours? Yeah, it was somewhere around five hours, but I th may have spent an hour trying to figure out what the problem was. Oh, you uh, did? Yeah, I skipped controls, through that. Yeah. Apparently, the controls, both on my keyboard and on my controller, were not working, so. That's odd. I don't know what the hell that was. I still don't know what the problem was. And I th now that I think about it, maybe that was the reason why my controller screwed up because I did that and I just went back to playing P4 and I figured everything was fine. Well, after P4, I tried to get back into my other games that I had going on before Persona. And none of my controls worked on my controller. At first, I thought, okay, it's probably just Dink and Rampa, so it's not that big of a deal. Then I did Rise of the Tomb Raider, and it still didn't work. And I was like, wait, that's not... No, this this can't be right. Sure enough, I checked. Uh, Killing Floor 2 was not working. Payday 2 was not working. And at that point, it was like, okay, my entire library on Steam is screwed. So somehow P4 still got by, but everything else is just not working. Uh, so I would I feel like that's more of a problem with your controller than anything else. I reinstalled Steam, and now everything works. So oh, that's weird. I don't know. I don't know what happened. So, but yeah, I I try to find answers on line and nothing really helps and then one of the fixes was hey just reinstall steam and then i reinstalled steam and yeah now everything works so that was weird huh and plus what made it even more weird if i plugged in my 360 controller that one worked perfectly fine but i kind of want to put that one at rest because i played that i, I had this controller my 360 controller all the way back when I was still playing like freaking Max Payne 3 
back in like 2012. So mm. it's the there I actually have tape on it to because I noticed the plastic for the cord is starting to snap. So I figured put a little bit of tape on it, maybe that would save it. So it still works, but I I think it I think I gotta like not use it as much. It it still still works. It's still a backup controller, but yeah. For some reason that worked perfectly fine, but my Xbox One controller does not work and reinstalled Steam and now everything works, so it's so weird. I don't know what that was. Yeah, I've I've never had that problem before. That's yeah. That is super weird. I would have totally thought my controller was broken. Same. I was actually thinking about just going back to a 360, uh, but obviously I didn't want to use uh, my old one, so I figured go online, get a new one, but thank God I was able to find a fix, because if I didn't, that would I would be out like probably 20, 30 bucks, however much. Yeah, that yeah. sounds about right. Oh, wait, that sounds about right for Canadian. It'd probably be more American. Unless I'm misremembering how much I paid for my Xbox, my wired Xbox controller. Hmm. Which, ironically, I never used on my Xbox. I bought it exclusively for my, for my laptop. That's right. Oh, God. That was forever ago. That was a long time ago. I feel old. <laughs> Doesn't help that my birthday is coming up either. I'm like, I'm old. My oh. You there? What's going on? Oh, sorry. I oh. bumped my... I bumped my... Hold on while I scroll back through my messages to see when my friend's birthday is. Did I miss it? Yep, it was yesterday, motherfucker. Oh, it was yesterday. Oh, I was doing RP last night. And it was like at the end of the stream. It was like one one thirty in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was already the 25th. And the person I was talking to, they mentioned, they were talking about this guy. And it's like, he forgets pe your birthday. And I was like, oh, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot my friend's birthday. Oh, I forgot my best friend's birthday. Oh, the, I'm going to text her right now and be like, happy late birthday. <laughs> uh, I always feel like a jackass forgetting. Uh, let me rectify. <laughs> happy, happy late birthday. God damn it. I've been trying to make sure I remember it all week. I'm like, remember, 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 and I fucking forget the day it happened. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway, what were we talking about? I just totally... Uh, oh, controllers. Oh, yeah, we were... Yeah, good. I, I, I enjoyed it. Fun little game. Not for everyone. Um, We'll come back to I well we'll talk about the soundtrack later. Um I guess I'll talk about a little bit about RP and then we'll do the break and then Liv can go on a rant for the last half. Alright. Oh you wanted to tell us your favorite Helltaker waifu? What did I say? I like I had like three that I said. I don't. Uh... Shit, I can't remember. Um, I I came up with those ones on the spot, and I was like, oh no, I don't remember. I'll, I'll come back to that later, maybe. I don't know. Um, but yes, RP. Let me look at my calendar and vaguely think about anything that's happened in the past week. Um, oh god, what's happened? We've had... Oh, we had another thing with Spike, the private investigator. 
he once again on a day that he's like, you know, I'm just going to go on, do some deliveries, get some money, stuff like that, not like planning to do anything, runs into Trivel, uh, like Kiwo, like Kiwo's like person she streams with, like, well, he's confused devil, um, but like the Lorna and uh, Trivel's basically I don't know if I I think my character would think the Tribbles like Lorna's right hand man, but I think it's more the dynamic that Tribble kind of keeps Lorna. Well, he was the one who kind of drove her into the life of crime in the first place and kind of directed her. But again, I've been kind of out of the loop of that storyline. But it seems like that's kind of changed a bit. But anyway, he Spike ran into him and uh, reiterated his, uh, their desire to have us catch Daffy, and uh, he carved a T into Spike's left hand, or one of his hands, uh, as a reminder not to fuck with them. So, uh, also, <laughs> it's great, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's like, also they know who you are now. I'm like, oh, lovely. But um, he's not entirely sure if Tribble believed him that I was really his partner. At some point, I imagine, I will probably run into Tribble at some point and have a conversation with him on the matter, which hopefully I leave unscarred, because that would be very nice not to be scarred or maimed can't wait for your tea in your hand oh boy i'll be wearing i'll be wearing gloves forever then <laughs> um i hope that doesn't come to it i mean i haven't done anything other than be associated with spike but they've only seen spike do stuff and they just know i'm an, an alleged associate I was actually expecting, like, maybe I'd run into a horse race, but as coincidence would have it, or fate, or whatever, just how things turn out. The guy who um, plays Eddie Collins, the person who uh, runs the horse races, is taking a break from streaming Red Dead uh, RP and is doing other stuff, which good on him, so there's no horse races, so if I was going to run into Tribbled, it would be in the wild somewhere, which won't be great. I was hoping it would happen at a horse race, because at the very least, it would be noticed if I disappeared. <laughs> like, if suddenly I didn't make it to the uh, starting line when the race started, you know, there are people there I'm friends with and would notice. So, uh, yeah, I'm less enthused about meeting them in a not public place. There'd be, there'd at least be witnesses, yes. Yeah, there, there would at least be witnesses and people who would, I could at least say, hey, if I don't make it for the race, um, just assume something really bad has happened to me. <laughs> would make for a good story arc when you disappear during the race. It w yeah, though I'm not sure. I think that'd be a little too high profile for for uh, for him to do. Be very very high profile. Way too many people, too many people would notice I'm gone, and that would just put an unnecessary target on his back where there's already literally everyone else hunting him down. Speaking of hunting people down. Last night, I got robbed for the first time. They only got $7 off of me, because I don't carry more than, like... I don't carry any more than $10 on me at any one time. Because, you know, if I get robbed, I'm not going to lose anything uh, consequential. Thankfully, he didn't take my rifle, which I was happy about. I mean, he took the guy I was with, Eli. Uh, his he took his Lancaster repeater, which wasn't fun. But we were talking with the, uh, we were uh, telling the events back to the deputy, 
and she's like there, there was a point where he put away his gun and he took out a rope and was tying the other person down and she was the deputy told us yeah at that point you can totally pull out your gun and uh, deal with him or like tackle him or something because he's taken his weapon off you so you are then a lot you, you can fight back then because your life is no longer in danger and I was like oh because I was just like really like I didn't I don't even know if it crossed my mind I, I think it may have crossed my mind for a split second but I just didn't do it I just kind of complied with the guy but uh <laughs> It would. There was two opportunities where either of us could have, like, drawn guns and held up that guy, which would have been a great way to turn the tables. But now, for future reference, if someone takes their gun off you, you're allowed to then fight back. Which I, it's funny enough. Like, character-wise, uh, Ryan would have a hundred percent. As soon as that guy had put away his gun and went to tie up Eli, would have drawn and held the guy up. But uh, I wasn't. I I was just so worried about like I don't want to do anything wrong. <laughs> uh. So now I know for future reference, if there's a oh an opening, and I feel like I can exploit that to get out of the situation or to deal with the person who's threatening me do it uh so there was that um and we we reported it to the sheriff well deputy uh then like three other people came and they were after some giving of uh accounts eventually came to realize that those three people were robbed by the same group of people they were like four or six people riding around just robbing people and uh there was only the the deputy we were talking to her and a recruit on 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 the server at the time so uh she couldn't do anything so she unofficially was like you you know if you all go together form like a posse you can only have like a posse of six people while well, there were six people um who ended up going so that was fine it's like okay you know you didn't hear it from me but they're that direction like obviously they can't sanction taking the law into your own hands but at the same time there was no one she had no backup at all and couldn't deal with this group of people that just running around and uh stealing from people unfortunately we never we never um we never caught them we there's this one person we think we think was like a scout and an informant for this group we think it was very he was very suspicious and just kept popping up everywhere and it'd be really funny if it was just complete coincidence, but it's a really, really strong coincidence. I came up with this great idea that, unfortunately, just we only, we we never really saw it to fruition. I dressed up like really fancy, and then the other guy had like a good look, good like a fancy stagecoach, and we just we're gonna ride around with the posse just out of sight, and just tempt them to rob the stagecoach and then we'd pounce on him unfortunately that never we, we we started doing that and then stuff happened and we didn't end up doing that i was really sad about it because it was such a good idea <laughs> i'm like oh man i came up with such a great idea and then you know we abandoned that and then people had to leave and then i was like all right well that that ended, but uh, it was it was a very eventful day yesterday. Went from like the server was like not super full to it was pretty full, and I was worried I wouldn't get any like wouldn't run into anyone, wouldn't get any like 
great RP or anything, but it was just constant for the entire for mo for most of the stream. I actually went till just before two o'clock when the when the restart happened. <laughs> I was like, man, I wonder wonder when I should uh, I should get uh, get off because we're like we're in the middle of this and we're all hyped to doing it and then <laughs> server cl server restart and I'm like well that's a hard quit for me <laughs> and I was like wow guess I don't have to uh, make that decision of should should I keep going it's two o'clock in the morning <laughs> um other than that I can't think of anything else to talk about. It's just been it's been fun and I'm getting to know more people. I'm getting to know more people and they're also like also some of these people are people who are around consistently. So there's good chances like good chances of me running into them again and which is just one of the things where you'll you'll meet people and then maybe you'll never run into them again, but I'm, I'm getting to know more people enough that it increases my chances of running into people I'm acquainted with, which is fun. You now have like consistency in that. Uh, I think that's really all the m major stuff that happened in RP. Um, yeah, still having a lot of fun with it. I think, depending on how I'm feeling uh, when we're ending the podcast, I think I'm just going to roll in and do some more RP after the podcast. Podcast? The podcast. I had a problem with stumbling over words yesterday. I don't know why. I just kept, for the first half of the stream, I was just stumbling over words constantly. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> I do that all the time. Yeah, it's like I just yeah yeah. There was one thing I'm remembering back where there was like a fist fight going on. The other guy accidentally had a gun equipped, so he pulled out the gun and shot. And I made a re I made a comment to him like, "Man, you know, fighting like an archaeologist there, making Indiana Jones reference." Have you seen Indiana Jones? Yeah, I, I've seen it. It's you, one of the best series I think I've ever seen. Nice. Uh, it's a classic. Yeah, remember the scene where he shoots the sword guy? How can I forget? That's uh, that's what I was referencing. Yeah. <laughs> and um, everyone's like, what's an archaeologist? And I'm like... <laughs> I I backed off, like, because I wasn't on... I'm like, it's 1899. I'm like... I'm 99% sure archaeology has been a thing for a while. I did. Go I I backed off and like, oh, maybe that's just a thing in Canada. That's that's what I'll. That's what I say when I I'm like I I overstep like some technological invention that hasn't been there, that doesn't exist yet or isn't widespread yet. I back mm -hmm. off and I'm like, oh, maybe it's just something from Canada. But uh, archaeology was a thing for uh, era way earlier in the 1800s so I was not wrong I was also not wrong about when I mentioned records which they were actually a thing in the Americas in the it's either the 80s or 90s I, I, wait, it was the 80s they were introduced to Europe and the 90s they were introduced in like the Americas but they don't become popular until 1912 so records existed in 1899, but like the gramophone was like the most common thing, and the records don't become, yeah, like 1912s when records are suddenly like, that's music. That's that's what everyone uses for for music and that. So I wasn't wrong about that. It's like I get so confused. Like, funny enough, as much fun as I have in like the time frame, like. 1899 is a really shit year for me to roleplay in because it's after 
all the major conflicts in the 18th century that I'm familiar with, and it's before World War One, so it's in that spot where I mm-hmm. don't really care. <laughs> So it's just it's just turn of the century and there's so many inventions that happen in just that short amount of time. Like the well, I guess that's in the 19 early 1900s, like before World War 1, like the Wright brothers fly the airplane, the Model T, which I thought was I honestly thought the Model T was it's in 1908 the Model T and the assembly line is made. I thought it was like in the 1880s. I'm apparently 20 years off. <laughs> With that, so there's just all those little things that I'm like, I have a vague idea that they existed, give or take a decade, but it's the give a decade part where they happen 10 years later that, uh, that I have a hard time with. Also, me forgetting that Queen Victoria reigned till 1901. I corrected myself uh, once when I was like, the Queen's English, I mean the King, because I thought Victoria died in the mid-1890s, which I guess I was getting that confused with. I probably got that confused somewhere along with the assassination of the Russian Tsar around that time, and I think it was in the 90s when... Uh, Wilhelm the first Kaiser Wilhelm the first dies and then Kaiser Wilhelm uh, Kaiser Wilhelm Kaiser Friedrich uh, dies so there was a lot of monarch if, if I'm remembering that's in the 90s so there was like a lot or was that the 80s oh god see it's just all a blur in that in that time period right. for me everything just gets so I gotta be careful when I'm when I'm talking about certain things because I'm like, yeah, it's hard. I'm like, when other people are like, that's not, a, are acting like that's not a thing. I'm like, is it really not? A, am I making a mistake or do they just not know that's a thing at that time? <laughs> Which both are equally true until I Google it. <laughs> but yeah, still having a lot of fun with RP. Um,. I've done... I did more of the campaign. Uh, didn't I do, do the campaign two or, two or three times this week? I'm, make, I'm making steady progress through the, the story. I'm like... I think I'm at 57% completion. I'm like 37% on the story. Which you do... Well, I guess I did a lot of side missions, too, so that doesn't really count. I don't think that counts towards the story. But, uh, it's a lot. Red Dead's just a fun game. There's a lot to it. It is. I'll finish the story at some point. I mean, I'm, I'm slowly working on it. I mean, just balancing doing the story with RP. One of them's gonna end first. It's gonna be the story, because that has an ending. But, uh, yeah, that's what's going on with Wild West RP, and that takes us to our first hour. Um, so let's do clips, and then Liv can can uh, take another two hours to say whatever he wants. Yay! Yay! Please don't take two hours. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna. Uh, you want to send over your clips? Well, I try and get things. Nope, I'm opening everything. I'm not. I don't want to open. Uh, is it that one? There we go. I guess we'll just hold on here. Uh, load up all my clips. Good news about my clips. It turns out some of these were not nuked. And there are some good ones in there, too. 
All of them is going to be from uh, Silent Century. Oh, I clicked. I was wondering why that opened the same clip. I just I clicked on the same clip twice. Uh, uh, actually, I don't need to open up a new tab because I'm shift clicking out of a document. Uh, do 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 do. Yeah, all my clips for this week are of Milton and then Ray. Am I missing one? One, two, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me tap so I've opened. One, two, three, four, five, six. What did I skip over? I thought I pressed them in sequential order. Oh, I don't think I clicked this one. Because my grandpa. That's the one. Okay. Uh, yep. uh, and I'll grab your clips. Oh shit, it's when. And oop. I'm going to blow up my computer with how many tabs I'm going to open. Only time I've ever had to open this many tabs was for university. Well, I've got like 20 fucking documents open. Actually, this might be... No, uh, it's... Well, with the amount of tabs I've opened, it's probably on par with the most I've had. Uh, there were... Five of them? Yes, five. Yep. Okay, just making sure. And... Okay. Let's go with... Well, we'll go in order. I can't find my mouse. There it is. Uh, so we've got clips from Ray, and this these are <laughs> clips from him playing Cursed Halo, which is the, the first Halo game, but it's a mod that, um, that uh, makes things interesting. <laughs> Like uh, the uh, one of the examples, like the frag grenades are actually like a D twenty. So you throw the frag grenade, and something random will happen. <laughs> like uh, it'll maybe it'll explode like a frag grenade, or maybe it will spawn a vehicle, or maybe it'll spawn a shit ton of enemies. You don't know. It's random. And, like all the weapons are different and stuff, but. Uh, for this clip, uh, you just need to know that the default pistol um, is backwards, and if you use it, it shoots you in the face. So uh, that's the that's the prelude for this clip. Uh, oh, oh right, I should be screen sharing, shouldn't I? There we go forgot to do that. Alright, and as soon as I find my mouse again, here we go. Ah, hold still! Out, hold still! No, no, fire the gun! Ah. Sergeant, we're surrounded! <laughs> God damn it, Jenkins! Fire your weapon! There are too many, Sergeant! Don't even think about it, Marine! Oh, this is loco! Get back here, Marine! That's an order! Jenkins! <laughs> and, uh, I think it's on purpose in that mod, um, 
you know the mission keys where you have to go find him? And then he's like all flooded. He's all, he's all floody. And then you grab his neural implant. Yeah, that mission's broken. And it just skips it. <laughs> and uh, I you think it's on purpose because he dies in this cutscene because of the pistol. <laughs> so you just skip that mission entirely because... Oh, he's dead. <laughs> um, here's some more of Cursed Halo. I can't... What? Oh, are there... <laughs> They're fucking flapping! <laughs> Their wings are flapping! Actual... <laughs> Actual birds. Alright. <laughs> a lot of dumb little mechanics. Um, let's go on to... Oh, those guys are just disappearing. Okay. Whoa, what? What is with the warthogs? The warthogs are so tiny! You heard the lady. Move like you got a purpose. They're like kids' vehicles. What the fuck? They like go up to their hip. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, they had. <laughs> There's like. Uh, a couple different warthogs. There's, there's like there's the tiny ones where literally one you just it, it's really awkward when you get in because you're just you're just all bunched up and just all, sitting on top of basically what looks like an RC car. There's one that's um, it's the warthog, but it has two extra seats on it, and then there's another one where it's an additional two extra seats, so it's super fucking long. It holds like seven people, and then there's one uh, that's missing a tire. <laughs> it's it just has three wheels. I think it's called Old Reliable or something like that. <laughs> just it just has three wheels. Um, and then next up we have uh, Milton clips, and I think these are in order. This was a this was a great. This is all from one stream. This was a great one. Uh, with uh, uh, Milton's character, Derlin. <laughs> was a, oh god, it was, a, it was a great, great stream. Here's a couple highlights from it. Three, two, one. Because my grandpa will skin you alive! You don't have any bullets. Well, jokes on you! Because my grandpa was <laughs> That was good. That was good. That was completely unintentional. Because when you you could do a quick hip fire, and uh, it just locked mm -hmm. on to him. <laughs> oh god. Oh, it was just a cacophony of uh of stuff. And uh, here's when they were robbing the general store in Strawberry. <laughs> just freaking <laughs> shot him right in the head. There's just blood pouring out. And he fucking, he just walks away. Like, holy fuck. Uh, and this is, uh, this is later when deputies show up and, uh, and have the store surrounded. Mr. Man! Yeah. 
Daryl, are you all right? What's there's going on? There's a man on, on the to bridge. Me. There's a man on the bridge. He has a gun for Frick's sake. There's a man on the bridge with a gun. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so, yeah, he shoots that deputy. And then that deputy you see at the end there, he kind of goes on on a like a panic for a little bit. And eventually the deputy's like, yeah, hold on. Just stay behind me. And then Ricky Milton pulls out a lasso and gets him. And then they, uh, then they kidnap that deputy and they threaten his life. And then eventually they let him go. Which leads to, this was the end of the stream right here. Uh, this is aptly named the end of the Dewberries. All right. <laughs> Let's see some hands. Let's see some hands. Oh. Come on. Stop rolling. Well, I'm well, going to shoot you. What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, my God. My hands are up. I got my hands up. We have our hands up. My hands are up. My hands are up. The shot is useless. The shot is useless. My wife. My wife. My wife. My wife. Oh, God. No. The boat's sinking! Come on, the boat's sinking! Get it in the boat! Get it in the boat! Oh, God! They got Paul! They got Paul! They got Paul! Oh, no! God! No! Oh, God! 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 And then the and then the boat sinks and uh, and Darlin drowns because you can't swim in the game, so or you you can't swim very well, and you have like super limited stamina for uh, for RP, so he just drowns. <laughs> but yeah, that was the uh, the deputy there who got who was kidnapped by them earlier. Just they were. They were just like, ah, let's just get drunk at the saloon and go on a boat ride. And they're just they're just casting off as the freaking deputies roll up. <laughs> like we fucking got him. <laughs> <laughs> uh that was that was such a perfect end of the stream. Like, oh uh, <laughs> Oh, that was that was so great. I almost I almost I, I was glad I stayed to the end of the stream because I almost was like, oh, I gotta get to bed. But I'm like, ah, oh, you know, they're they're wrapping up. I'll, I'll watch to the end. And I was I was so happy I did. So it was just so like, oh, just great. All right. Now we have your clips from Silent Century. Um, any uh, preludes you want to give to these or? Uh, not on this one. Okay. Playing. Three, two, one. Oh shit, it's wind song. Yeah, we're NPC in. Oh my fucking god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Oh shit! That's my wife! Hey man! Whoa! Whoa! Sunflower man! <laughs> he just camps out of nowhere and freaks sets her! Yep, just side Oh my god! So hilarious. Oh. Oh, that's fucking great. <laughs> okay, now this one, this one's good. Uh. So I actually saw this. Apparently, this was like one of the last times he RP'd. And basically, it ruined his entire week because he could not top this. Basically, the entire stream was so good. He couldn't match that same level of intensity and just great RP. And basically, his sound guy would do basically just about anything just to get sound and let well the clip will speak for itself you'll right. see him you'll see him all right this is already sounding great young man in the back without a mask he's he's currently lighting it on fire that was that, that gonna be gasoline he's pouring gasoline on the truck right now Mr. Roo, Kim, are you guys getting this i'm getting this all on film 
All right, looks like they've uh, they've poured gasoline on the car, and now it's gonna be on fire. Move it up. There's some there's some random boots. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's moving. It, it's the it's stopped. And there's an officer Stop. on fire. Oh my God, he just died. Oh Don't dear God, man. In the meantime, oh Jesus Christ. Uh oh. Whoa, that's a lot of money that I'm just okay. It looks audio. like that's gonna be get that audio. Get that audio. Get it. And it looks like the officer's down. Multiple officers down, uh, more as the story develops in just a moment. Holy shit! Hey! Holy shit! All right, it looks like these gentlemen were seen on the scene as it happened. Two officers now... <laughs> <laughs> get in there, get the audio! That was funny! Right in the middle of the explosion, just... he just comes running out with his boom mic! <laughs> get that audio, get that! Yes, sir! <laughs> On it. I, rem I remember chat just almost like, man, this kid's got this stuff. You look at him, get the audio. Man, he's a legend. <laughs> oh, it's oh so my great. god. <laughs> just running in. And it was like, and I remember there were, I, I, I tried, it got nuked, but I tried. All three of them in one scene all tried to break out the boom mic. Are, are you getting the audio? I'm getting the audio. Are you getting the audio? <laughs> there was like three guys. It was it was a uh, freaking silent sentry and two others, and all of them were just they were behind a bush, not even trying to be discreet, but they <laughs> grew it. Just get the audio. Oh, it was so good. Oh. Uh, this is just more again, more of that same day from the same stream in uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it was so good. All right, let's go. Live of the scene where it looks like this man has chosen to end his life after it was too much to bear. The police, uh, the Los Angeles Police Department. Oh, oh Jesus my God, Christ! He just ran out. Oh, shit. Jesus! Oh my God, he just ran him over! Oh, they may not have seen him in the. Oh, dear God! Oh my God, this is absolutely disgusting. Oh. Don't they got him in taser point? Is that necessary? I mean, the man's already jumped twice. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> just casually runs him over. No, no, no. This is such a fucking long blood stain. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Ugh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is not from the same stream, but it's it's still good RP. Oh, that that was so good. I love that. Oh boy, some good mirror talk. Mm-hmm. Looking good. You. You. You're goddamn beautiful. Who's the mayor? It's like you're the goddamn mayor. You're the mayor. Who's the best mayor Los Angeles ever had? That's right. Ron Hartman, that's right. Sexy piece of shit. If that wasn't me, I'd fuck me. I'd fuck the shit out of me if I wasn't me. I wish I could fuck me. It's not fair that I can't. Yeah. At least I can still get myself a hand job. You know what I'm saying? Oh, sounds like someone's here. Oh, hurry up. This is hilarious. Oh crap, someone's coming up. Uh, I better wash my hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit. Oh, it's awkward. Gender confusion. Oh boy. <laughs> Let's see what this is. Fine, y'all can have him. You can ha have your way at the poly. I don't even want. You know what? No, I'm just blind. I can't shoot a woman, but you! Oh, you, what? you though! I, I identify as a woman. Take. Oh <laughs> shit. Oh. God damn it. Oh. You win. You win this round, motherfucker. Shit, I wouldn't want to piss off Tumblr. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you win this round, motherfucker. <laughs> I identify as a woman. Oh, shit. Well. Well, I don't want to piss off Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was. That's. That's the. <laughs> Silent Century, man, he he can get into some crazy shit that is just downright funny. I'm sorry. When he when he gets on, it gets on. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, oh god. And I still have more clips, but they all have music in them, so I gotta make sure to nuke those uh 
So next podcast, I got to make sure to uh, delete the VOD afterwards. Oh, but that is so great. <sighs> nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, Liv. I'm going to hand over uh -huh. your soapbox. Um, what do you got? Well, okay. Multiple stuff, but I'll try and get through this uh, first part as quick as I possibly can before I get into P4. So, first things first. Uh, I've actually decided on starting a new project. Um, it's something that I thought was really cool, really unique, and I already uploaded my first video of it. Basically what it was, one day I was just listening to music and I basically came across a song I heard dozens of times and all of a sudden I just started thinking about Yakuza. And I was like, wow, you know what? This might actually work. This might be a thing. So the song was Sympathy for the Devil. Uh, it's originally from the Rolling Stones. But I ended up, because uh, I'm a huge Motorhead fan, I was listening to their version. And so with Yakuza, I played the series. Whenever you do side content in the game, all the sub stories, there's always introductions. Hi, my name is Kiryu. What's your name? Oh, my name is X. Who are you? So there's a lot of introductions. And it doesn't help that the song always says, glad to meet you hope you say my name or something like that. And I just started thinking of the Yakuza and all of a sudden a light bulb went off in my head. How many streamers have you ever seen do game reviews? Dozens of them. How many of them actually do a music video of their favorite video games that they play? And basically that was a Eureka moment because I love music. I love that's part of the reason why I listen to the music that I do is I'm basically on the for end, uh, never ending search to find a song that could best match just what goes on. It kind of tells like its own story. So basically that's what I did. So I took Yakuza, uh, specifically zero and I did a music video of it. Now upon making it, I also realized, well, it's a good story and I don't want the game to be spoiled by anyone. So obviously I released the censored one verse of uh, the, I released the censored one first and I, I do have the original uploaded. It's all there. It's just, I have it unlisted. So it's basically upon request. Um, eventually I'm going to upload it. Well, make it public. I mean, uh, eventually I'm going to make it public. And so, uh, yeah, I just had a blast just creating it, uh, and that was basically like a new thing I just started thinking of, and I love, love, love the RDR2 version that I'm working on right now. It is beautiful. It's a masterpiece. I absolutely love this song. It fits the genre. It fits the period, and best of all it's a cover song from the 1950s that blues sarancino he took it and made it into dark country or country blues you could also say and the lyrics are very dark and it don't get me wrong i i heard the original it's fine but the problem i have with it hearing Four guys with the upbeat smile, gonna uh, God's gonna cut you down. Uh, how does that one part go? How does that one part go? It goes something like, uh, "Gonna tell that long tongue lighter, gonna tell that midnight rider to the rambler, the gambler, the backbiter." Back tell him that God's gonna cut you uh, down. Cut, yeah. cut you down. Yep, that's it. That's Johnny so, Cash, is it not? Uh, he did a cover of it. Uh, he changed up the lyrics a little bit. But wow. uh, the original was from the 1950s. It was uh, these four uh, black guys. I forget the name of their group. Uh, but they were the originals. And then basically that was like a big band, kind of like doo-wop kind of type of music. 
and then uh basically johnny cash and uh blues serencino uh johnny cash he basically did the same song but he did change up the lyrics a little bit and then with blues serencino he ripped the exact lyrics over and I just I, it, it's a good song, but I think the country blues is way better uh, represented just simply because the lyrics are dark and just hearing some people being upbeat saying how God's gonna cut you down. It just doesn't me. It just doesn't work, but it, it's still good. It's still good. I like the song, uh, but I, I just think that country blues was way better. So I basically just took that song and that's the song I'm actually using uh, for RDR two. And I absolutely love it. I can't wait to uh, finish that one up and hopefully get that released. But yeah, that's kind of been like a new thing. I just kind of been doing. Uh, so. Uh, Cause basically there was a huge moment. Uh, now we could get into uh, P4 basically there was a huge moment in persona four and basically because uh my data plan kind of came back and i kind of need to watch over that like a hawk so because of that um well i didn't feel comfortable kind of i wanted to get back to my stream schedule so i couldn't stream for monday and tuesday so i had two days and i basically started thinking oh man if I slow down, I might start thinking what's around the corner. So I just need some to like, just kind of like take my mind off of it. And this was like basically a project that just basically did exactly that. So I didn't, my mind wasn't wandering and it was focused all on this uh, new video project. Uh, and the audio that, or uh, the title that I ended up calling it is like a, a swan song for the fans. And because, I mean, that's basically what it is. It's games that I like with songs that I like. And so I'm just kind of like blending that passion together. Because those are easily the four things I love. Streaming, gaming, pro wrestling, and music. And music easily is like at the top of the list. So, yeah. And then on to Persona 4. Persona 4. This game... Is something else it's a game that originally released on playstation 2 and then it got ported over to a handheld the uh, playstation vita and then uh when it got ported over it also got some updates so basically uh all they just did was is they added a character there's a secret dungeon that wasn't in the original you get an extra month uh added if you get the good ending and then finally uh god what was what was the fourth thing uh oh yeah they also added basically the thing that gave the name uh gold golden is you have rares running around uh dungeons you don't see them, uh, well, if if you grind like me, they actually kind of came up relatively often, but not too often. Uh, you, could, you could be on the same floor dozens of times grinding, and it still might take like a few hours or just a few minutes in order to find one, but you're almost guaranteed to find one if you keep grinding. Um... I kind of did like unnecessary grinding in the very, very beginning. So because of that, that probably added like a few 40 hours to my overall gameplay. So yeah. Um, but yeah, other than those a uh, few updates, everything else is legit uh, from like the story was never changed. That all stayed the same. And that just blew my mind that this game was a PlayStation two game because no other game was like this that I played. Um, so basically there's like so much I could be sitting here talking about, but I think the one thing, the one thing I can say about it, when it came to like really great games, Yakuza was the game that basically showed me games could actually bring in 
real emotion, send you on a roller coaster ride of emotions. Yakuza taught me that. What Persona did is something beyond what Yakuza was able to do. They didn't just give me a roller coaster, they provoked. I I think the word provoked is perfect. They provoked an emotion. And I never got that with the game ever. Well, I invoked physically... might be a better term for that. Hmm? Invoked might be a better term invoked? for that. Yeah, invoked. Okay. Well, it basically, I, I felt attacked. And I never got that with the game, ever. And it just, I, I just never had that. And so basically, I think in my actual gameplay, I think I recall, I actually knew who the next person was. And even though that I knew, I was kind of hoping that maybe it wasn't. I think I wanted to trick myself into thinking that maybe it's not who I think it is. And then as the game goes on and you're hearing the game character and have everything just basically happen, that's when it sank in that I can't trick myself anymore. This is, this is actually happening. And when that happened, it was an emotion I never will ever forget. I basically... In, in the beginning, it was just straight sadness it was i if if i if someone were to give me like a q a after after the end of that particular stream i would have told them i think i cried for like 20 minutes straight and then i actually looked it up it was more like four minutes but those four minutes felt like hours to me and it was, it was just something I just never went through. And I remember when it was going down, I still wanted to try and believe that it wasn't happening. And I just, I remember closing my eyes and just tilting my head back. And then like, almost like, please, no, no, it's not it. It's not it. Press A, here's dialogue. A little bit more. Press A, here's dialogue. And I'm just doing that. And at one point, there was a certain character that came into the room. And when I heard their voice, that's when I, it was like a dagger through the heart. And that's when I could not hold back the tears. And then I brought my head forward and I'm just burying my hand, right hand, in my face, I couldn't even look at the screen anymore. And I just, and even going back and watching it, I could, I could actually hear myself not even looking at the screen because you hear this long pause before I do anything. And at one point the game gave me a Q and A question. I didn't even look at the answer. I just hit a, and so whatever it was is whatever it was. And so basically I discovered what my answer I picked was until I basically saw the stream again recently. Um, and like, it was just something that I just never experienced and going through, and that was my first playthrough. And technically that was for my first playthrough, the last dungeon. And Going through that dungeon, I didn't necessarily turn off chat, but I basically was so enthralled as to what was happening that, um, that I mean, I still had chat just running, but I told chat, I'm not going to look. So type wherever you want. I hope my mods are actually present because I'm just going to focus on this screen and just play out this uh, rest of this dungeon. Uh, I played it out, and it was it was something else. And I think I 
I think I basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I basically ended the stream there and afterwards I was just so wrapped up in emotion. Uh, after that stream, I basically gave something between a sermon and an inspirational speech. And I had to play that back. And when I played that back, it was the first time ever I heard myself talk and I was speaking from the heart. I was speaking from passion. I never heard that. I was actually very tempted to actually send dark that clip, but I figured eh, it's an hour. He probably wouldn't want to listen to it. And I almost kind of wanted to send it to everybody, but I don't know. It's one of those things where I don't, I don't, and plus, I didn't really like my presentation of it because it came off so unlike me. But there was a part of me, after it happened, I felt like immediately sending it to Dark. And I was, I was going to send it with the caption of, was this me? Because it didn't... Because I was speaking in a way to where I was basically letting out some of my most deepest thoughts and it was just something unreal and that was just something else not to mention the experience that i just went through with this game to where i felt i felt attacked and i felt a need to go through that dungeon and it was just something else i'm actually kind of shaking a little bit right now just thinking about everything that just took place from that one stream. But I went through it. I ended the stream. And the next stream, I basically finished the game. So, and I got a generic ending. And some people were telling me it was a bad ending. And I was like, it, I don't think it was that bad. There was a lot of unanswered questions, but it, I don't think it was bad. So as the credits roll, I'm thinking, okay, let's see the good ending. So if, I mean, if, if this is what people consider bad, I want to see what people consider good. So then I look it up and I see like someone gave me, a, someone had a guide and it's like, answer this uh, when you get a list of Q and A's answer this, this, and this. So I'm looking at the guide and I do it. So then that leads to 12 more hours of gameplay. And the game just got better as it went on. It, it just, yeah, I, it's just going back to like what I said before. It was, Yakuza taught me how to, taught me that, video games can really come from the heart and then ha having a moment to where I'm just invoked by what's going on. And it just, yeah, it, it was just something else. And those 12 more hours, it felt harder and harder for me to pull away from this game. The game essentially said goodbye to the player in so many ways. Some of that you're going to hear when I go in through Artist of the Week, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But in more ways than one, the game said goodbye to the player. And at that very moment, I realized how many games have I ever played to where the developers are trying to use these characters to essentially say goodbye. And that just, that hit home. Like... Uh, I never brought this up on stream. I never brought this up on the podcast. But since I remember since the age of 11, I was always moving from one town to another. And there was one school I, I'd been to, and I was almost prepared to just be like, here we go again. I'm the new kid. No one's going to really know who I am. I'm not going to really know anyone. Let's just get through it. All of a sudden, the... It was it was weird. I remember this years ago. Everyone in that school knew me, and I knew everyone. And it was so weird. I made the basketball team. I felt like my grades were doing well. 
And then all of a sudden something happens. And basically I can't go into it because there's like 20 other different things that just take place. And I can't go into that without like shorting it. And if I short it, like long story short, this happens. Well, if I do that, I'm, it's going to be like, Nani, explain to that again. Like, how did that happen? So then eventually I got to go through all 20 different things. And plus, that would break away from just being live to win to Joe Schmo. And I would prefer to stay live to win. So because of that, I can't go into it. But basically, we had to get out of town. And my mom said, pack up your stuff. We're leaving. I begged my mom. Can I go to school one more time to say goodbye? For some reason, when I finished this game, I didn't think about it at the time. But looking back on it, I can now say I basically got the goodbye I always wanted. And that's something that, again, no other game. Now, of course, that's a personal experience. So, like, no one else is going to, going to have that same experience, which is understandable, and that's fine. But, like, it, I mean, it may come off as cheesy, but that's honestly how I kind of felt because I felt attached to some of these characters. And some of the characters are just really, really good. And I just really enjoyed them. And to have the game say goodbye, it just, it was just something else. And then that was another thing. The game said goodbye, but it's only goodbye if you actually leave the game. And off stream, I've been going through a true ending playthrough. So basically, I never left. And because of that, it's just, I, I legit cannot leave this game. Like, it is hard for me to leave this game. And that is just something that, again, no other game really did. And I, I just really love it. I really, really do. Uh, before like everything kind of happened, I remember thinking to myself, well, this is definitely no Yakuza zero, but it might be slightly not as good as like one Yakuza one. And then after everything happened, I was like, no, this is definitely on par. Maybe if anything, maybe even slightly better than yakuza one and yakuza one's not bad like i gave it a solid 10 out of 10 easy all day every day but this might be slightly better than that maybe but to be fair i do understand some of those are because of personal experiences and just my overall feel of the game and because of that you know i just everything was just perfect i absolutely loved it and again it's just something that is this never going to leave? And yeah, uh, the main characters are awesome. I thought the voice acting was great. Uh, the music, we'll get into that. Um, but yeah, it's it's just been something. And I just, yeah, I don't, I don't think I could speak any more highly of this game. And kind of very similar to Yakuza. There is this one, they, I, I just love this idea of just like, you're able to laugh, but you're also able to go through other emotions as well when you play through the game is just laughing and crying is just something, it it just kind of makes the game that much more better to me. I don't know what it is. And I even had a conversation with a friend the other day, like, I think I'm in beginning to enjoy games that basically have a soul to where they tell great stories, they have decent music, and the game is just, like, it comes from the heart, and, like, I'm a huge GTA fan. GTA cannot even come close to this. I loved RDR2, but even that is mediocre in comparison, and that's the best storytelling that Rockstar could ever do, and that's just it again it just makes me just love the game there's just that much more but yeah it's it's just been a ride and it's just been something so that's basically all i wanted to say and 
yeah, it's just been awesome. So, uh, P4, man, I highly recommend it. There are some issues, but I think it most of the issues are from low tier PCs. Uh, I think, but who knows? Uh, I did post uh, my issue that I had with the game. I was able to mimic it. But all things considered, I really want to say if someone has $20 and they think that they have a mid-tier PC or better, I, it, it's going to be kind of hard to not say no. Like, I think it's well worth. Give it a shot. You might like it. Uh, I know I did. And I know Dart said that he had no interest in it. And that is perfectly fine. But I wouldn't be sitting here saying that I I wouldn't not mind to see him like go through it. Like it's it it really means a lot to me. And because of that, I know he also said, yeah, you could go ahead and just talk about spoilers. Whenever a game means so much to me, I feel like I have to not talk about spoilers. It's a it falls into that personal experience to where I don't want to ruin it for anyone else that might uh think about even remotely doing it whether someone's listening to me right now or what have you when this gets uploaded on youtube all that stuff so but yeah it's yeah i i would love to talk more about it but i think i said enough so and i guess we could move on to artists of the week so yeah it sounds you, like you had a so very you unique experience oh with that game very mm -hmm. unique experience I don't think I've I don't know I don't think I've ever had that kind of experience with a game before definitely nothing personal I don't recall yeah it's very cool that you uh you found that mm -hmm. um yeah so artist of the week um, my pick this week was the Helltaker soundtrack, which I've re I said b earlier was in my top three. Oh shit! Oh, excuse me. My top three for um indie horror, uh, indie horror games, indie games. It's not a horror game at all, not by any stretch of the imagination. Well, maybe no, that's. Nah, I don't know what I'm saying right now. Uh, yeah, I love the music. It's it's a great soundtrack. Fantastic for just having on in the background. Um, I just really I got hooked on this soundtrack after playing the game for for a good solid week, week and a half. I was just listening to the soundtrack. It was just it's really good. I liked it. Especially the, um, well, obviously the main one, that's Vitality, I believe, is the name of the main song. That one's Banger. That's what I have to say on it. Uh, Liv? Uh, yeah, the music, to me, it was fine for the game, but mm, didn't really do anything for me in terms of, like, wanting to listen to it again it was it was somewhere in the middle for me it was it was fine for what it was but uh yeah fair enough fair enough i mean yeah there's not you know it's, we've had the same problem with other stuff where we've given like soundtracks or stuff mm -hmm. and things it's just like it's not in the context of it so it doesn't always click with some people where it's like it, it needs to be in the uh, in the context of it to enjoy it in in such a way so yeah that's understandable uh, and you want to go on about the P4 soundtrack Persona 4 um, basically this is just another area that Persona 4 just did very well in uh of course, I don't think it was anywhere near as good as P5, in my opinion, but it's, I mean, it was still decent. Like, I, 
think I need to add some tracks so that way I can possibly play them at the start of the stream sort of thing. Uh, might have a few of them that might make it to my MP3 player, but we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, basically, I didn't notice it in my original playthrough, but when I had to make the list together, I ended up coming across the song Snowflakes, which only plays at the end of the game if you get the good ending. And I looked at the lyrics. I could almost swear the game in the lyrics was trying to say goodbye. And again, going back to what I said before, in more ways than one, the game was trying to say goodbye. I didn't notice it only because I was just basically wanting to... It only would play when I'm outside and I'm trying to go from one place to another. And trying to micromanage your days is kind of like one of the big things about Persona. So I couldn't really... I, I didn't want to like lose thought of like, oh, hey, I want to listen to this song real fast and I got to remember to make sure to do this. So, to, yeah. So because of that, I didn't really actually pay attention to the uh, the soundtrack, sadly, when I was uh, streaming it. But when I did this uh, particular uh, artist of the week, by the way, I actually, the artist that I had lined up for today was actually blue serencino but i figured nah i i want to say a proper goodbye to uh to p4 so yeah so i ended up going with uh her name she's the main vocalist of persona and her name is i believe shihiko harada i believe uh, i'm trying to find you know what screw it i'm pretty sure it's uh shihiko um but yeah i listened to the songs i liked them uh basically i wanted to kind of go of more of her songs uh from like other games or like other songs that she did in general but um in the end i ultimately just went with uh, what I went with. And because I saw five songs from what Dart gave me, uh, it was actually kind of perfect because one of the songs I actually ended up finding was actually uh, a really cool song because they took all the... Well, they took the vocalist from P3, P4, and P5, and they did a song together. I think it was Labyrinth, I think is the name of the song. So I was kind of torn between songs. And basically, when I saw five, I was like, yes, then that means I could use this one. So apparently it was off of uh, Persona Q2, apparently. And yeah, the song was called Labyrinth, I think. And I, I just really liked that song. Because it had like the sound of P5, but they used uh, three different vocalists. And I thought that was just kind of awesome. Um, I think the song I think I like the most, mainly because it's like one of the most often played songs, is uh, Reach Out to the Truth. It was just a classic. Another good one is uh, Time to Make History Real. So, yeah, those were kind of like my favorite songs. Um, I'm still wondering where Dazzling Smile came from, but that also came from one of the characters in the game, and I kind of skipped her, sadly. And, yeah, I also went with Snowflakes, because never a bad thing to hear a song that basically is trying to tell the player goodbye in its own words, so I thought that was awesome. But, yeah, that's the artist I went with for this week. And yeah, so Dirk, thoughts? Yeah, I liked it. Uh, no surprise, because I found like the Persona 5 soundtrack was great. Uh, no surprise I liked 4, because, you know, I imagine that there was some basis for the good music they had in the game that came after it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really liked it. I liked the I liked 4 soundtrack. 
I would say, yeah, Five has a has a yeah. maybe it's the singer. It's a different singer, right? For for Five. Uh, yeah that that was Lynn Izumi, I think is mm. her name. I mean, it might be the singer, or maybe like both the singer and just the different uh, beat or like tone of the music that makes uh, Persona Five soundtrack kind of jive or like pop a little more. But Persona Four was good. The yeah. uh, soundtrack reform was good. And also upon uh, coming up with the list, I also checked it. The composer that actually made the songs for Persona the Games is the same composer that makes Persona the anime. So it's kind of kind of awesome that they never even switched out the uh, composer. That's so the always same one great. That's in four. So the same one that's in four is the same one that's in five. P3, so on and so forth. So that's actually kind of awesome. Yeah, it's always nice when properties like keep like their good music mm-hmm. artists. I can't remember. I I want to say that Jeff Will, William Will, Williams Williams, uh, the guy who does the soundtrack for Star Wars, he did music for the games as well. But then again, I'm I'm thinking back to the old Star Wars games, and they just replayed music that was in the movies. But I think he did music for the for for the Clone Wars. I don't know. I've never actually looked that up now that I'm thinking about it. But it's nice when they use like mm-hmm. the same art, like the the this artist. You know, they they've got the or like the person who produces it or wh- ha- right wh- wherever the fuck the whatever when it's consistency and it's being run by someone who who you know they they have it on lock for what they're doing like that you can trust that they're going to make a great score no matter what it is because they just they just have it yeah Totally agree. All right. Well, damn, two hour podcast. So, Liv, what's uh, what's your plans? Uh, in terms of for me, for my channel, uh, again, a little hard to kind of break away from P four. So, I th- think I was gonna do what is it? Um think and romp of but sadly i th- think it's just coming off of p4 i think i want to give that a little bit of time and to try to get back into the normal stuff so i think i'm gonna go with uh, rise of the tomb raider for a little bit um and plus i might be doing a lot of reading off stream because i'm doing the true ending so that's kind of another reason why i'm going with rise of the tomb raider as well um but other than that, I'm also going to be going back to Yakuza 0, hopefully. Uh, see how that turns out. I might do some Yakuza 0 tomorrow, I think. So, see how that goes. Other than that, yeah, I'm going to be going back to Rampa, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Yakuza. Nice. I got to get back. Once I'm, once I'm done with Red Dead, with the Red Dead story, I'm going to have to go back to doing uh yakuza zero because i don't want it i i don't really want to do the red dead story while doing like even just discounting rp i don't want to do a like a massive story like red dead at the same time i'm doing an even longer story like yakuza that's just uh they're about the same uh are they about the same i guess i'm just uh, i th- I think I have like 80 something hours in my original gameplay of Yakuza 0 and I think I have 80 hours in Red Dead 2. Mm. From what I remember, I could be wrong on that. I don't know, maybe it's just my progression in the game or because I've been doing a lot of not so much with Yakuza like collectible hunting. I imagine that there's is there a point like near the end of the game where it's like, hey, you can go get all the collectibles, or is it like, 
other areas that you'll just never return to? Uh, there's nothing really cut off other than the original map to RDR 1. I mean, As in Yakuza. Oh, in Yakuza. Um, collectibles? Like, I know I there's mean, the phone cards. That's the only collectibles yeah, those, I can think of. Uh, yeah, like, those are always available as long as you're able to uh, go in those areas. But, yeah, it's... The game... Whenever something big happens, Yakuza's gonna tell you, are you sure you want to continue? And Okay, it's one of those games. So, basically, whenever that happens, yeah, you could uh, always just say no and then just go back to exploring um so yeah you basically have free range for the entire game okay so. that's good to know i think i've just mm -hmm. been more on top of collectible hunting with red dead 2 and i've got 63 of the 90 challenges done god i'm at the uh, one challenge for I've got a piece of paper I'm writing down because you need to pick one of every single plant species for one of the challenges mm. and that does not you know, it doesn't go by your your thing because why would it? You have to pick them all over again and I'm just writing down every single plant I'm picking up from since that started. So, I mean I can't pick them all up anyway because I can't get down to West the, the other half of West Elizabeth and New Austin because of the, you know, the wanted level down there. But, yep. uh... But I'm just keeping track, just because if I miss something, I, I won't know what I'm missing, like, up north, or is it down there? I'll never know. Right. So, just got a lot of note-taking on that. I guess I've just... I guess I'm 100%ing Red Dead 2, maybe? I don't know. It sounds like you are. It it really turned out that way when I spent two days collectible hunting. Actually, three days. And I've got, well, thankfully, I'd say like 75, maybe 80% of the collectibles are in the area you can go to immediately. I basically got, I think I have almost all of, no, I think I've got all the collectibles for where I can be right now, and then just everything is just up in the air, which is nice. I mean, I, I guess it's mostly because uh, Red Dead's such an open world, as opposed to Yakuza, where it's not, like, a massive map. I just felt like more, I want to go places, I want to do all the collectibles and that, just to have them out of the way, and then I can just play the story. Like, playing, um... Uh, Saints Row, um, mm -hmm. like especially four, where the collectibles are power ups to level up your powers. So you just go around and get all those, well, as much as you can until you get certain powers. Where it's like, oh, this lets you grab these ones. But uh, yeah, I got, <laughs> um, yeah, fifty seven percent done completion of that game. Yeah, I've, I've, I I've went ham with it. But uh, yeah, once 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 uh, Red Dead's done, or once I'm done the story, I won't be streaming it anymore. I'll just do all the rest of the completion stuff off stream and like casually. And then I'll just start doing Yakuza 0 again. But yeah, um... So... So yes, that's gonna do it for the podcast. Um, Liv, is it easier for you if I just if I click stop streaming and then I and th is it a problem for you when I I think I did it before where I kept streaming after the podcast? Is it a problem for you to do a cutoff and just cut out the podcast? Part? Uh, it might depend on what. Do I still have that one installed? You're in luck. I got Twitch leechers, so because of that, you might actually be able to... You don't even have to stop the stream, I think. Okay. You just gotta let me know when you cheat the FO. Yeah. I gotta go to the washroom anyway. Ah! 
Uh, so yeah, that's going to be it for the podcast. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. And we will see you all two weeks' time on Liv's channel. With what? We have, well, probably more Persona 4, I imagine. <laughs> the end Red Dead RP. So yeah, see you all then. Liv, say goodbye. Oh, uh, goodbye. Okay, there's your hard cut for, for the, uh... Perfect. For the, yeah, I'm just like, bye! And then you, you don't say anything. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Uh, well, it was nice talking with you.